Hey guys, it's Bub here, and this year we're taking a look at a custom build of Windows 11 that I think is pretty interesting. This build is known as Live 11. Now Live 11 claims to be a optimized Tiny11 image that is designed to fit on a 4GB VHD and it runs completely on RAM, similar to like how a live Linux distro would work. So in this video we're going to take a look at this and seeing how this really works. Now. A good thing to note about this is that even though it's designed to run on a 4 gigabyte VHD, you need to have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM on the virtual machine. I'm not really sure why, but that's what it says you have to have. Now, for some reason, oh, I know why. I totally made the mistake here. On the page, it says that you have to actually run this as a legacy system. You can't run it in UEFI. So I'm going to go ahead and try to set up a legacy system. I believe Windows 7 will create one. So just for testing, we're going to give this 16 gigabytes of RAM and finish that. This should, in theory, create a system for us that does not use UEFI. And all right, let's hope that this works. I actually put the wrong file in. Let's try this again. So like I said, now that I've made two mistakes in this video, there we go. Part of this project is made possible by grub for goss I really do not have any clue how that works, but it is currently loading the system into RAM. As we can see, it's telling you how much is loaded into RAM out of the 4 gigabytes. All right, and here we are approaching on the 4096 mark. I'm really excited to see what happens. This is definitely not a quick startup. This is a very prolonged and slow startup, but we are now booting into Windows 11, or Tiny 11 as I should say. We're going to take a, a brief look around the operating system, see how it performs. Theoretically, this should actually perform much better than it would on the SSD, because RAM has a higher read-write speed than your typical SSD does. So in theory, this should run very snappy and very fast. But, as we can see, that is may not be the case, as it is taking quite a long time just to load into the operating system and this is slow because it has no graphics drivers um, I was not expecting it to go into the out-of-box experience I was expecting this to go into the OS but instead it went into this so if this is loading into RAM I suppose that that means it would not save if you restart the machine so there's almost no point in setting this computer up because once you restart the machine all your setup and all your crap is gone so i would not recommend this unless you have a reason to do it but it's just a cool concept that's the whole reason why it exists but the fact that it's taking so long just to load is a little annoying Ooh, that's another thing i just thought of if the computer is going to restart it didn't Oh, it's going to quickly load it. Okay, I see how that works. So maybe if you restart, it's not going to lose all your progress? Because I was just thinking, like, if this computer is going to restart, it very well may not save that, and we're just going to be stuck in this infinite updating loop. But it looks like, and I'm hoping, that it's going to boot straight into where it was. But if it doesn't, which I don't think it's going to, I'm going to actually disconnect the network adapter. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going back to where it was. So with the network adapter disconnected, it's not going to get any updates or anything. So we should just be able to bypass that and go straight into the desktop where we can definitely take a look at this operating system. So that would be an issue that you'd run into is that Microsoft wants your computer to update and then it just straight up doesn't let you. So let's continue to set this computer up. Yeah, 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 whatever. And that appears to be it. There is no out of box or we don't get to pick our username or password or anything. It just lets us straight into the system. Um, that took a little bit longer than it typically would on that high screen, which is a little strange. But here we go. And like I said, this should not take long at all for the simple fact that this is RAM. This should be fast. All right, and that did not take any shorter than your typical Windows installation, 
but here we are on the desktop of this Live 11. So this is at, like I said, this is completely running in the RAM of our system, which is the 16 gigabytes that we allocated. And as we can see, I'm not even sure if we have enough room to install VMware tools because it creates basically a four gigabyte RAM disk, um, 3.99 if you wanna see how Windows formats it. Yep, can't install. So that would be a problem, I guess, where you can't actually run or install any apps on here thus far unless you somehow figure out how to expand that RAM disk. But oh yeah, that just went down to 97.5. So let's take a look here at performance. So it, I, this is interesting. Okay, no, we gave it 16. I was about to say we gave it four, but we gave it 16. Four gigabytes is hardware reserved because that is actually the RAM disk. So there is 12 gigabytes of available space for the system to use. Um, so let's just curi out of curiosity. Yep, the RAM is it's slowly going down. So let's just see. We are 22H2. We're actually not that far out of date. This is a relatively newer build of Windows 11. Um, so yeah, just taking a look around. This does just look like regular Tiny 11. I mean, accessibility, calculator, file explorer, get started, Microsoft Store, Notepad, Paint, settings, setting tool. Very minimal, basic things here. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. The fact that we can run Windows 11 in a live environment like you can with Linux is pretty cool. Um, I was not actually aware this was something that could even be done in the first place, but obviously it is, and it's running pretty well. I mean, things are responsive enough. Things are snappy. Um, even have the tab file explorer here. Uh, yeah, I mean, things are snappy. They run like they would. I'm not too impressed with the speed, though, because I remember I did use a RAM disk for Windows 11 before. Um, and it was more snappy than this, I think. But at the same time, I could be thinking wrong. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as we do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. That being said, I'll see you all in the next one.